What's going on, everybody? It's your main man, Brother Saeed. Today is Thursday, tonight, the ninth. And what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna talk up to I'm gonna talk with the host of the Connect Forum, Miss Camilla Carter. Um Ms. Camilla Carter. And with the last, our last conversation we had was about the disconnect of Black America. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to go into what we got coming up next weekend, which is a conversation about colorism. So I'll bring her on. And um, we, we had chatted up for a few. And um, if you got there, if you're panicked, looking, just hit your friends up, tell them to connect with us and be part of this conversation. All right, here we go. How you doing, Miss Carter? I need the audio. Sorry. Hi. How okay. are you? We good. So listen. Um, this um, once again, this is your main man, brother Saeed. I am the creator of the Connect, um, the Disconnect, and um, Camilla Carter is the host of the Disconnect. And we're just going to chat a little bit. And I'm, I need for people. I have to start introducing my host. When I do these things, I put them together, and I don't really give the host a chance to, you know, let's tell us a little bit about who they are. But I'll let her tell them a little bit about who she is. Then we're going to go back a week and talk about our the forum, the disconnect, and then we're going to move forward and talk a little bit about our next forum is colorism. So introduce yourself, and we'll take it from there. Okay, yes. I'm Camelia Carter. Um I'm in Greensboro as well. I'm from New York, Niagara Falls, New York. I've been in Greensboro for a little bit over a decade here. Um, what I do aside from my nine to five is I have a company called Start to Launch, and I help companies with their uh, organizational skills, getting them from start to launch per project. So that's what I do. Um, I love empowering our people so that we can be greater. Um, so when Saeed asked me to host, I thought absolutely, it definitely fits me. So there you go. <laughs> okay, so let's go, we're gonna go back to last uh, two weeks. Well, no, actually it's about a month ago. I do them like the third week each month. We had a we had a conversation called The Disconnect of Black America, which turned out to be a great conversation. We have some good people on the panel. Your daughter, she did just a great job. She's very knowledgeable. Yeah. And I'm glad that she was um, part of what we was doing. So during that conversation, you know, we had a, the disconnect of Black America. Um, what did you get from that? And do you think that um, people feel that way, you know, across the board? I think I think that because well, there was different topics that we had within dispelling the disconnect, like that touched on different things. I think your perspective will come from your environment, how you were raised, what your experiences are, um, because not all of us experience the same things as African Americans. So, you know, some of us are disconnected from our culture, some of us are not. So it just depends on who you are, and what you've been through. Um, I thought that it was interesting, mainly hearing the differences between the older generation and the younger generation, just the huge gap there. It was just so true of just expectations and what they both want. Yeah. That was really interesting. But but the best thing about that was, you know, the young people that we had on the panel was your daughter and Tell me your daughter's name again, because I keep forgetting. Naomi. Naomi. And we have Brother Hassan along with it. But the best thing about them being on the panel, they really was like reaching out to us and saying that, you know, it's not that we don't want to connect with y'all. Y'all don't approach us in a way to make right. us feel like we're like we um know what we're talking about, or it's or mm -hmm. y'all don't give us the respect, you know, the same respect that y'all want from us. So mm -hmm. it's not like we don't want to be part of part of your conversation. Y'all just don't allow us to be part of these conversation. And if you do let us be part of these conversation, our conversation has is like voided. It doesn't mean nothing to y'all. Right. Right. That's true because a lot of the older generation, they had the they have the mindset. Some of them still has sit down and be quiet mentality. And, you know, that caused a lot of trauma in previous generations. Sit down, be quiet, don't say nothing. Like, you don't have a voice. 
But this generation is all about voice. It's look at what happened during George Floyd and all these things and protests and stuff on TikTok or whatnot. They have a voice. And so I think if they can do it respectively, that's the key, then why not? Yeah, and I, but, I, but I also think that, if, you know, with them doing it respectfully, like we had in that forum, we have to come off the same way. You know, mm-hmm. and like like I was saying, you know, in that form of that, you know, my relationship with young people is is I say is good because I give them the opportunity to film theater through conversation. I give them the opportunity to educate us on what their feelings are or what their needs are and what their thoughts are about. Mm-hmm. So but overall I think the form was good. I think the people yeah. that, that showed up got something out of it. And um, but you know, and um but it, it it was interest it was interesting because the people that came, you know, they shared their viewpoints and it was kind of like they were saying we need to just put down our guns and put down our weapons and put down our guards and have this conversation mm-hmm. where we can we can come to some type of an agreement. Right. You know. Right. And, and and I'm gonna let you and I'm gonna let you speak at this, but and, but the best thing about it is even when we kind of got on the church thing, nobody like Cause we, you know, when you bring up religion, anybody want to bash? It wasn't even about bashing. It was about that they need to be part of the same conversation we're having right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Religion is a touchy subject, um, just in general, because it's just different viewpoints. It's emotional, and I wanted to keep, preferably, the religion out of the conversation because right. as African Americans. We get so emotional. We're emotional. We're an emotional culture. We are. And I wanted to keep it out because I didn't want the emotions. I wanted logic. Right, right. So let's talk about. But but I think overall, though, it went well. It did. So look, we're going to move forward and and we're going to touch on um, the conversation we're going to have next week about colorism. And if people don't know what colorism is, colorism is really is that how people look at darker skinned people mm-hmm. in a negative way i'll keep it simple like that right you True. Know? so what i'm going to do is and this is the, this is the this is the this is how i'm going to open this conversation up in the world of cosmetology and cosmetics when i see light-skinned people with makeup on they try to darken themselves up a little bit that's true and then I, right but then when i see darker skinned people with the makeup, they try to lighten themselves up a little bit. Well, unless, they, unless they more or less atrocentric, because that their makeup, right. you feel what I'm saying? Well, so, well, yeah. not as much because you know that's my field too. I'm licensed as a natural hair <laughs> specialist. Okay, okay, but no, only reason why I said that, only reason I said that, I'll let you finish. When I see these people, me personally, when I see people wear makeup, most people that I see the light skin, they they tend to darken their skin up, and most people, most um, black people or darker people, whatever, I don't want to how to say it, they tend to like enhance their 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 blackness, but it's not like it's not like how can I it's not like they enhancing their blackness and make it darker. It's like their makeup is more or less like bringing out the color. Is that a good way to say it? Well, there's so many variables with that, Saeed. So number one, I want to touch on this. I love Rihanna, her line. Fenty, because she's the first one to come out with, it was like 30, I don't know how many different shades. So that that was one of the problems. Whereas you as an African-American woman or person um, could not really find your shade. So let's right. think about that. You couldn't really find your shade. You had to mix and then try different brands. So that was just a mess. I know a lot of people who went through that. Um, I'm kind of like in the middle. So I always had like a, I didn't have to search as much right so but like the dark skin like darker men up had some issues um even lighter there was just because you got different pigments in there um i think that back in the day there was light skin just adding more like of a bronze look and then the right. rose cheeks and then the dark skin the dark dark skin women now do both of them do more contouring right it's changed so you embrace your color but you contour you make you know different areas a little lighter just to bring out your cheekbones but i think that i love brown not that i don't like light skin but i just love the melanin i've always been like let's see what you're you're saying right now is like 
what you're saying right now is good, but you know, it's like, okay, I love brown skin. I don't have an issue with, with lighter skin people, but I, I love brown skin. So what why why is it that we having this conversation? It's like um I'm trying to think of the lady, she got a talk show now. Um she took over Wendy Williams spot. Uh, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember her name right now, but she said there's a, this big issue in Hollywood now about colorism. Yeah, it's always been an issue. Hollywood right. is big, right? So, so my thing is, is, is are people are people going to Hollywood wanting to live an American dream, changing how they look to be accepted in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and does that trans spot and does that transfer into our communities to trying to do the same thing? Not only our community, as far as jobs, as far as jobs, all kind of things. Not only in our community, but across the world. Um, Africa. If you, I've never been, but I've seen. I'm going this year, but I've seen um, billboards just in like commercials and different things where they had like lighter skin people bleaching cream and things like right. that. So it is, but they actually put a stop to that. They put a this last year. They put a stop to that stuff, um, but it can impact a lot of different people and the reason why we're having this conversation is because it, we know it goes back to slavery right it goes back to lighter is better and you know you know all of that and you got treated better because you were lighter and then our men you know the light-skinned girl and all of this stuff well, and, you know I, it was well, that too. you know this this is this is like it's like anything else they want to because I'm a dark, I'm not dark skin, I'm like a brown skin man. Yeah. You know, I didn't date it. I never dated a white girl. You know what I mean? But I I've dated light skinned girls. I haven't dated uh, fair color women. I don't dated dark skinned women. I don't have a preference like that. Mm -hmm. But but you know, from looking at some guys that you know, even like women do say, well, he think he the shit because he light skinned or because he got green eyes and he this and that. We I do want to we go through that too. We go through that too. Oh, okay. But the thing, yeah, we go through that too. Men go through that too now. But the thing about it is, it's like, why, why is it that the darker skin male or female, why are they the, why are they the subject of this conversation? And it's not light skin people. That's that's you know we we gear we gear we gear this conversation with towards as well. That's but a good that's a good point because I feel like light skin people. Uh, not all, I can't speak for all, but a good majority of them might exclude themselves because they feel like they don't have to talk about it because they have maybe more privileges. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, if you had to choose a side and there was something going on, oh, you blacker than black. Yeah. Oh, you no, black. I don't have conversations with some people you know, doing this, you know, over the years, you know, light skin, dark skin, whatever. And, you know, I don't have people say, well, I know I'm look good because I'm this and that. But I said, at the end of the day, you black. Right. So I said, so what you need to understand is, is that you're getting the privilege because of your skin complexion. I right. said, you, think you might be getting the privilege because you got a big booty and big breasts and somebody like looking at you. I said, but I said, but we're just objects to these people in a system that was set up to make us have an issue with each other based on that conversation. Right. It's a cause division. At the same, at the end of the day, you bleed like I bleed. You have emotions and feelings like I have. It's not a difference. One thing about melanin, though, this is why I said I love uh, brown skin. To me, my experience um, with brown skin darker guys is just it's different it's preferable for me because it's just preferable i don't want to get too deep well i miss your preference you know i heard monica say one time she broke up with this guy he was an athlete and monica said that she just said that she said i broke up with him because he was in the mirror longer than i was can't nobody nobody got time for all of that she said you know now i'm supposed to be his girl i'm trying to look good for him right. but who who he trying to look good for? If he in the mirror longer than me, longer than her, you know what I mean. But but moving, but you know, just stay on this. Yeah. Thing. Why why do we have? Why you know we black people? Have, it's like with us, we have so many different um, challenges, you yeah. know. And we're letting 
this colorism thing become a, a, a more of a conversation with us because everybody want to be part of a media that allows them to shine. Well, let, let me let me tell you this. So it's just deep rooted. It goes back to slavery. It's because I, I watched this video and I'll say it really quick. It was a Mexican um, young man and he was talking about his experience growing up as the darker complexion. Now, to me, he wasn't dark at all, but in his culture, he was the darker of the family and he got shunned um, a lot. His mom would tell him, don't you go outside. You come out, come, you, you've been outside too long. You're going to get dark. That was his childhood. You know, don't yeah. you come outside. Oh, you've been dark. You dark. Or and then when they had a baby and the baby was light. Oh, you're so light. You look like an angel. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's not even just African-American. It's different cultures. Oh, I just said that. But this is, this is the funny thing, though. And this is what I'm, this is like, whatever. I'm going to say it like this. You know, even our four, you know, I didn't see, and I'm going into this animal thing now, where I didn't see animals that they come out at, at my nose, if they don't come out looking like the animals and I tried, the animals were shutting them too. Mm-hmm. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying, so it's that doesn't tell you how how deeply rooted this thing is. It, it's, it deals with everything and everybody, especially with us, because one thing I say about us is that we don't know how to let shit go. For as or how far as appearance, how we look at each other, how we judge each other. Mm -hmm. I don't I we there was, you know, just like you went back to Rihanna's um makeup line. Right. You know, there are so many different shades of black people in this, it really world, is. In this country. Why are we having an issue with colorism? Um uh, there there are other things that we should be um dealing with. But because the, they it, it comes down to privilege and it comes right. down to, it just comes down to privilege. It's you is some, it's some wanting to feel more privileged and feeling like because they are lighter that they feel more important. They feel more value, but that's not the case. I've never felt devalued around anybody right. that was lighter than me. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't play that mess right mm -hmm. there. Well, well, the, the thing of it is, is like, you know, when we look at each other and we look at, and we, and like I said earlier, we all have done it before where, where he or she, they think they cute because of this and that. We all, it's, that's just a human nature in us. But when we take it to a point where we hold that against people and don't want people to move forward, that's where the issue Yeah, comes. that's bad. That's you real see, bad. That's, that's where the issue come in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's my my whole my whole thing is what do we do? And 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 this forum this forum we're gonna have next week I I think it's gonna be a good forum you know yeah. because I want you know it's like I want I want white people to be at this be part of this conversation because when we talk about colorism how do now we you know we looking at each other mm -hmm. about you know how I say how do white people look at us you know when they say well we're gonna hire this person for a job do they do they take that into consideration what I definitely feel like they do you know we all do we definitely feel like that I mean we had so many issues even down to our hair I mean everything about a woman like it, it wasn't until we started uniting with the afro that there was a law put in place about work attire it wasn't until then where we had a dress code at work when we all uh, unanimous me unanimous me i can't even say the word together yeah. yeah when we started wearing things together then it was a dress code at work you know so it's all different types of like challenges that we have and then as a so as an african-american woman woman i mean men too but we have to deal with our hair our hair types not only our skin color, it's a lot of different things, you know. So. Well, I think, well, I know so this it's 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 a tough it's a tough conversation to have because you know when we have this conversation, it's like you know, I don't want to say we we're it's a conversation where it is we're trying to um challenge the lighter skinned person, 
But when I read the thing about what colorism is, it doesn't say anything about light skinned people. You know, it's a negative, it, huh? I have to, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, when I pulled it, it up, just it, just, address, it just addressed dark skinned people? That's what it says. I pulled it up. I pulled it up. That's why if you see the page where it got colorism, we got the dark. If you see my page, if you go to my page and you see what I got on my page now, it, it's it's con colorism is 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 about how black darker skinned people are viewed and treated and looked at. Well, viewed, yeah. Does the same no, thing about no, too, it does say thing about negative. white people. But the funny thing is, the funny that's very negative because the but the funny thing is typically we are not the ones causing the colorism issue it's everybody else mostly outside people who are lighter than us that are trying to make us feel devalued yeah. so it's funny that they put the problem on the dark darker skinned people well like i said um hey cassandra what's happening Cassandra, you could do me a favor look up colorism and put it on my screen and i'll share it with uh camilla but it doesn't like it the conversation because i wasn't going to my phone but the conversation doesn't say colorism light-skinned people it says it says colorism da, 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 darker Dark skin people skin. yeah that's what it says and that's just another and that's just another tool that's put in yeah. place to keep us at odds mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because yeah. you know i want to have I wonder how a white girl will feel or a white guy will feel if a light skinned person got a position that they thought they was going to get or or was thought they should get because of who they are. I wonder how they will react to that. That would be a good that would be a good like show. Well that'll be that well that's that would be a really good show, like a that's why I'm hoping that's why I'm hoping I get a couple like, a couple honest white people to come to the forum next week. Like, but I'm a like the show Undercover Boss. Like you remember that, but behind yeah. the scenes. But I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like I mean, yeah, I you know, I have nothing against Caucasian people. Like, you know, I don't have a heaven or hell or anything to put anybody in, you know, at the end of the day. And so, but my thing is I feel like when they sometimes come into these conversations that they play coy. They play like they don't know. No, no. Well, right. That's, well, see, that's not, well, see, that's that, no. that, that's what they do to get more information. No, I don't mind you getting information, no, but I'm just, no, no, I'm saying that's what that's what and I don't want to say white people, but that's what they do when they want to gather as much information from us as they can. They will act like they don't know, and they know because they didn't want to wrote the script. Yeah. Or they don't know what's going on and oh my god i didn't know that impacted you like that yes you do right yes you do right and that's what i'm saying oh, I, i'm hoping next week that i do get some some white people to show up that's honest you know what I mean? be like, be, right. yeah, because they can be like listen you know you know it, 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 we know we do it but that's just part of how we was taught you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Before you give, before you give this person that job, you make sure this person, we can get this person that job. And right. but you make sure the darker skinned person is the last person that y'all consider giving the job to. Because we right. need somebody in that front counter that that can relate that that what that comes to that front counter can have a sense of how can I say, a sense of security where they don't feel threatened by this darker person. Absolutely. And even, I mean, you can even go down to names. That's why, you know, it's, be careful how you name your child. And it's funny where you, you know, you go to an interview and you have, say, a black man show up as John, a dark skin, and he's qualified for the position. And they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, right. like, I didn't know that was you. Right. You know? On the funny. phone, they happy you come in. Then when you come in, they look at it, like, oh, shit. Right. You know? But, oh, but we're not though the position has been filled we i'm yeah, sorry yeah. yeah now now do do you do you think um light-skinned people get a bum rap because they're not like based on the diction based on that the dictionary what i read that they're not part of that conversation when we talk about um the question is do they want to be a part of the conversation because I, I, I haven't 
I think they're happy that they ain't because this doesn't. It's like they don't have to defend themselves. I I, I just feel like do they want to be a part of the conversation in general? I feel like uh, I feel like they can get a bad rap. Um, and I want to say they as if it's not us, but I feel like light skinned people can get a bad rap. Um, but I don't feel like they want to be a part of the conversation either. Well, I, like I said, we'll well, we'll find out next week. Well, know. make sure we have some light skinned people there and well, that, well, that well, that's my goal. I mean, the only thing I can do is put the information out there, show you, <laughs> encourage people to show up and be part of this conversation. Because these conversations like this are going to help us start right. a process of of working together and getting right. through some of the smallest things that keep us at odds with each other. That's true. I don't think in 2023 we should be having a conversation about colorism. I don't think so as either. As, and, and, and the thing about it is as much as stuff we go through as a community, whether you're light-skinned, dark-skinned, whatever skin, if you are Black and the stuff that we go through as a community, within our community and outside of our community, we should not be having a conversation about light-skinned and dark-skinned people because at the end of the day, everybody's to them is still Black. Right. I said at the end of the day, if you had to pick a side, say if it came to a situation, you had to pick a side where you had white people over here and black people over here. Not only is it black, it's going to be Mexican. It's going to be all of us with any melanin over here, light skin or not. OK, but OK, so I said something, but we should be doing a lot more for ourselves. But, you know, Absolutely. I, I, I think I so, think too. I mean, I think we, I, like I said, that's why we have these companies. I think we should too. But the bottom line is, if you don't, if people don't get out there and put out the effort to work on doing more, I mean, what can you say? You know, what I mean, we, like I said, I said this earlier, we should not have be having a conversation about light skinned people and dark skinned people and not, in 2023. not having a connection. That's true. We should not be having that conversation. That's true. But, but you know, when people get comfortable and privileged, it's hard to let and, go. And that's what I'm getting ready to say. When you talk about that <laughs> color line, the blacks and the whites now, you can best believe you me that a lot of light-skinned people is going to jump over that line. They are. They I'm like, I ain't trying to deal with that. I ain't trying to deal with that. I got, I got, I got, I got a small little piece of white privilege over here. Right. I'm not trying to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But, but can you blame them? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, what line are you jumping over? You going to have to pick, you got to pick a side. Now you might get a little bit more privilege or something or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, your morals and your values, then you just as bad as them. If yeah. you allow certain things to happen. Seriously, you are, you're just as bad as them. I mean, I no, I listen. And, and, and that goes, and that even goes for not even just a light skinned person, like a, a dark skinned person, too, who is choosing what do we, we call it, Uncle Tom? You know what I'm saying? You're choosing the opposite, not the opposite, but you're, you're valuing, you're, you're not, you're not really paying attention to what's going on over here. You're, you, you become com what, what's comfortable for them, for them to deal with you. And so you shun us and you right. take, all of their size so you become this prep and prime prim person with good intellect and dialect and all these things so you could fit into their box because you don't want you want all the benefits you can get right right but 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 like but at the end of the day their benefit the benefits that they hope they can get if they only get them once it's once they're right small and once they're is it worth they, it and whoever they dealing with, when they get tired of them, they're gonna send them back to the other side of the track. Yeah, you're going you know back. I mean? So, but yeah, so we we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to another subject, but we still gonna take deal with the, they, <coughs> stay where we at. Okay. Okay. Now you work. I'm sure you work in a in a multi. I'm, I'm I know you you're a corporate person. Yeah. Now, have you witnessed anyone? Have you ever been part of a conversation where it's you seen, you know, somebody that's less qualified, lighter skin, you know, maybe nice looking male or female to get moved to a position that you know they shouldn't have got, or you like question that? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen, absolutely. I'm not going to say that part. I've seen people get moved up in positions when they were only on the job for two years and people have been there longer. And because just to be honest, they're lighter or not only lighter and you fit into the box, but also darker and fit into the box. Don't have a mind and don't have a brain and don't come with, they don't want you to be a problem solver. They just want you to do what they want, you would what they want, especially if you're brown skin, right? Don't be a problem solver, just fit into the box. If you light skin, you get through a little quicker, but you still got to fit in the box. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Have, you, have you have you ever have you ever been have you ever been in a put in a position where it is they tried they tried they tried that with you saying look we need you to do this uh, can you do this just to see if you could do it so they could bring somebody in the, to to your position or or another position that that had that was more benefit beneficial to you financially. No, no, I wouldn't say me personally about and in that term, I, but my skill set was challenged. I think that it had something to do also with my personality because I'm not going to take no corporate BS. I'm just going to be honest, you know, I bring a lot to the table and they don't want you to bring a lot to the table, but I had a the vice president, when I interviewed for another position, told me that they're not going to take one of their best people and allow them and, and let them go to another department, basically. I'm not looking to take one of my good people and let them go over here. So basically, you've reached your glass ceiling, mm -hmm. but you allow other people that's been at the company two years one year to become this and that and this and you're like wow you right. know so i've experienced it on that level but at that point you know you go through a uh you go through a tr transition internally mm -hmm. and then you know you start making changes you know you know what it is yeah it's well like i said i what me being in the, in the in the chemical field in the fields of man i can't say that i really experienced that but i've been there for far as guys getting moved up and you know i never even really looked at it like that because like most of the people that got moved up in front of me been there longer no more so i mean i never really had that issue because oh, yeah. and the thing with me anyways when i go to my job i just tell them i want my job description mm -hmm. whatever you pay me to do that's what i'm going to do if you move joe blow and, and 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 I'm and long, long, so when I come and ask you a question, why are you moving? Didn't get in the position, you know. And and if I'm happy with it, I keep it moving. Even if I'm not happy with it, I let them know why I'm not happy. And don't keep it moving because we tend to let stuff get to us, and then we we start saying and doing stuff that isn't beneficial to us. Right. You know. You know. You know. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you do. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna we we're gonna wrap in a few. But what I want to do is, I want you to just um, give me your last, give me your, give me your, give me your um, last thoughts and shout out to who you want to just and and just and just tell them why they should attend our forum next Saturday the eighteenth. Absolutely. So I just want to shout out everybody that comes across this uh, video and tell your friends, tell your family because. These are the discussions that our community needs. These are, this is where we start to heal. This is where we start to understand. This is where change take place. Change doesn't take place in the White House. We know that, right? Not as much as we want. Change takes place within our own homes and our own communities. And we have to begin to understand and break down some of these barriers break down some of these uh, misunderstandings and purposefully like purposeful misunderstandings that's that's there so that we can heal and we can begin to treat each other better and operate more better as a community. So definitely come out. I'm looking forward to um, hearing you guys, hearing what you got to say. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to close with this. If, have you ever noticed you never seen 
a picture of NFL and NBA players' wives and girlfriends. I've never seen a picture of them. Like where? I've like seen a group. Oh, never seen. I don't think I've seen I, a group you, picture. You never seen a group picture of NBA husbands with their wives, or you ever seen a group of picture of NBA wives together or girlfriends? Not in a group group individually as a couple, but not in a group. Right. right. And you know why they do that? Because it's a lot of black and white and different races and a stuff. Lot of, it's, no, it's mainly black and white and light-skinned women. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that and, and the NBA and, 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 and National Football League getting stupid. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, so but I, and I just brought that up to let people know that just it was, it, it, it's designed for this, for to set certain things to the side, but it's also designed for us to see certain things, things that keep us at odds. And when we talk about colorism, that's one of the things we should not be at odds about because, and I like what you said about um, Rihanna's, if she have to make 13, 30 different shades of makeup to, to, to satisfy us as black people, and I'm saying satisfy in a good way, we should not have a conversation about why right. white skin people or dark skin people are going through what they're going through. So this is your main man, Brother Saeed. This is my girl, Camilla Carter, and the host of the Connect Forum. Come on out and see us next Saturday at 18. It's free tickets. Go on my page, get free tickets. So, and this, and I'm gonna close with this. If you if you're not part of this conversation, don't go around and talk about people about this conversation because we're all trying to educate each other in a good way. And you know what I close with? Get the black mind right. Peace. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. You're welcome. Thank you.